Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So for the next few videos I'm going to continue uploading Castlevania related videos. The anime has re-sparked the old flame that is my love for the universe of the series. While I was continuing my playthrough of Lords of Shadows, a thought popped in my head. What if the two timelines were connected? For those new to the franchise, Castlevania has two separated timelines. The first is based off the original series, in which we mostly follow the adventures of the Belmont bloodline, the famed vampire hunters that thwart Count Dracula down throughout the ages and through countless struggles and monsters. We see how over and over again, Dracula, driven by his hatred and bloodlust, fall to not only hunters, but even his own son. Eventually, the timeline comes to an end when Soma Cruz, the reincarnation of Dracula, finally destroys the chaos powers that fuels his dark power, virtually ending the reign of the Dark Lord. In the Lords of Shadow timeline, we find the sorrowful tale of Gabriel Belmont. Gabriel was an orphan boy left at the doorstep of the Brotherhood of Light, an order of holy knights dedicated to the service of their god and the preservation of humanity. The order was formed when three warriors fought together to defeat the ultimate evil known as the Forgotten One, an ancient demon that even Satan himself feared. The Forgotten One, beaten by the three warriors, becomes trapped by a seal placed by the powerful knights. After the incredible battle, the three heroes journeyed to sites where the veil between heaven and earth was the closest. Each of the knights purified their bodies in order to cross the bridge to heaven, becoming powerful angels. Unwittingly, the heroes that shed their physical bodies created the three Lords of Shadow. The Lords of Shadows themselves were the darkness inside the three mortal heroes. Carmela became the Queen of the Vampires, Cornell, the Lord of all werewolves, and finally Zobek, the Dark Lord of Death. The Brotherhood of Light continues to prevent the plague of monsters that now travel freely across the world due to their founders' mistakes. A prophecy is known by the elders of the Order that the end of days was approaching because of the three Lords of Shadow. They send out their strongest warrior, Gabriel Belmont, to find a way to defeat them. While Gabriel's true motive is to find a way to bring back his murdered wife, Maria, Gabriel journeys across the land defeating countless monsters and even the Lords of Shadow, collecting the pieces of the God Mask, which supposedly allows wares to bring back the dead. Gabriel is able to absorb the powers of the Lords with his equipment, and eventually slays the dark sides of the heroic knights. Killing them also killed the angels in heaven, as their souls are still linked. Across the first game, we find out that Gabriel was manipulated by Zobak, the Dark Lord of Death who in turn was actually manipulated by Satan himself in order to kill the three powerful angels in heaven. Gabriel being forced to kill both his wife and Claudia fills his heart with righteous fury and fights against Satan. Defeating him, Gabriel's journey is completed and he uses a god mask in hopes of resurrecting his wife only to find out that it allows him to see the dead through God's eyes and nothing more. Like the heroes before him, Gabriel makes a tragic mistake. Killing the three Lords of Shadows releases the seal placed on the realm that the ancient demon, known as the Forgotten One, is trapped in. Laura the Vampire convinces Gabriel to stop the demon before he can escape to the mortal realm. Unfortunately, in order to prevent the Forgotten One from escaping, Gabriel must travel to the realm the demon is trapped in. Humans cannot pass into the demon realm, so he must become a vampire, drinking from Laura and ending her existence. Gabriel enters the prison, and skipping past a lot of the DLC story, he steals the power that fuels the ancient demon. Gabriel becomes the ultimate evil. He even renames himself Dracul, which means the dragon. Betrayed by God, he rampages against the higher power. While I would give a brief summary of the second game, there isn't much that really could contribute to the theory that I've been conjuring up. Basically what you need to know is that Gabriel struggles to retain his humanity and yearns for the sweet release of death. His son Alucard, aka Trevor Belmont, conceives a plan to eliminate both Zobek and Satan. Alucard puts his father into a deep sleep, almost like he had been vanquished during the assault by the Brotherhood of Light, and he awakens in his weakened state almost 500 years later in the year 2057. Skipping past the game, Gabriel finds his will to live and defeats both Zobek and Satan, and seeking to protect humanity, he finds redemption with his son. Okay, so now that the timelines are covered, we can look at the similarities between the two. I'll just start with my strongest point. My first thought is that Castle Dracula itself is the link between the two timelines. The castle obviously isn't just a structure, it's a living, thriving being that survives and is directly tied to Dracula's life force. The massive castle resides between realms, able to draw upon the dark powers of chaos and supports its master's dark intent. The castle is found in both timelines and is also seen as able to exist between realms. My theory is that the castle is actually the glue between multiple dimensions. The two timelines that we see are incredibly similar, even having villages, monsters, and characters from both timelines in them. I believe that the veil between the two 
timelines would be the thinnest inside the castle. The original timeline is what I consider the Dark Dimension, as what I will be referring to it as for the rest of the video. The Dark Dimension holds Dracula, who has given into his darkest desires to destroy humanity, while in the second timeline, which we will call the Light Dimension, focuses on Gabriel Belmont, who will become the ultimate hero of humanity. While the two do have their differences, we do know that these two dimensions have a theme resembling one another. The castle is the anchor between the two dimensions, since it is able to reside between the realms and seems to be in the same in both timelines. If we take a look at the Dark Dimension timeline, which is filled with a massive influx of Dracula being resurrected over and over again throughout the centuries, especially after the 1600s, what I'm thinking is that during the time that Gabriel Belmont is placed into his deep slumber, Dracula from the Dark Dimension is somehow ciphering his alternative version's power. For the sake of not being confused, I'm going to call the Dark Dimension Dracula Matthias, as that is his original name before he became the Count. Matthias is clearly able to absorb the powers of others through the power of his own soul which can be supported by the fact that the reincarnation of Dracula, Soma Cruz, is also able to do the same. Matthias, during times when he is defeated, is able to steal Gabriel's power while Gabriel is in his slumber. Both of the two vampire counts would be within the demon realm while they wait for their return, so it might be plausible for Matthias to steal Gabriel's strength. Gabriel, even seen at the beginning of Lords of Shadow 2, is incredibly weak upon waking compared to Matthias, who gives any young vampire hunter a run for their money right out the gate. Hell, Gabriel isn't even able to defeat Zobak once he awakens, which is pretty much a nobody in my eyes. The castle can be seen in the Lords of Shadows timeline in an ethereal realm, constantly trying to prevent Gabriel from leaving it, even going so far as to create the darkness known as Inner Dracula. I believe that the Inner Dracula seen in the game is actually Matthias. Matthias is obviously evil incarnate and succumbs fully to his bloodlust. He is seeking to keep Gabriel inside the castle, in order to use him as a power conduit fuel himself as a way to return to his own dimension. Matthias conjures himself up as Inner Dracula. However, Gabriel is a Belmont, and that is just the bane of Matthias' existence, so he obviously fails. Again. Moving on to my next point, that the timelines merge when both Draculas are waiting to return. As said before, the Dark Dimension is drawing on the power of the Light Dimension. If we examine the actual timeline, we notice that Matthias is revived over and over again, especially during the times that Gabriel is asleep. From the 1100s, we see almost no interaction between the two. Both Draculas are wreaking havoc on the world in one shape or another. We know that Gabriel rages against humanity for about 400 years. Eventually put to sleep around the 1500s or late 1600s, it's during this time period when Gabriel is asleep that we see Matthias being resurrected the most. Even when we see Gabriel in Lords of Shadow 2, he is drained, though supposedly due to lack of blood. In Lords of Shadow 2, it takes place in the year 2057, decades after the events of Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, so it suggests that perhaps during his 500 year slumber we see Matthias consistently drawing Gabriel of his powers. Without Matthias' intervention, we might have seen Gabriel return to with his full power once a sword was pulled out by Alucard. Moving on to the final point, let's take a look at Walter, the original owner of the castle in both dimensions. In the Dark Dimension, Walter is seen as a vampire in which Matthias uses to absorb in order to become Dracula. While we never see him in Lords of Shadow, we do see his likeness through the eyes of the Toymaker. The Toymaker was tortured by Walter in Lords of Shadow and looks incredibly similar to Castlevania's Lament of Innocence, Walter. We also know that both Walters are powerful sorcerers and that both are capable of summoning powerful creatures. It is here that I theorize that the two dimensions begin to merge within the castle. Walter becoming an immortal vampire king in the Dark Dimension, and in the Light Dimension it's the summoning of the Ancient One and eventually the creation of the Lords of Shadows. The Walter in the Dark Dimension is a powerful vampire who eventually is absorbed through Matthias' power, while in the Light Dimension, Walter is a man who summons the Forgotten One demon, forcing the founding members of the Brotherhood of Light into action. These two beings, while in different dimensions, are the catalyst for each of their respective timelines. In order for this theory to work, both Draculas must exist. So to be connected, the events following the first Lords of Shadows have to have taken place. Once Matthias has Walter's soul, he begins his life as a vampire, and once Walter is dead and the Forgotten One is imprisoned, we see that Gabriel is set on his path to defeat the Lords of Shadows. So yes, I offer you my solid factual evidence that the timelines are connected through the castles. You can't poke holes in it, it's actually impossible, I can't pronounce words. Get over it. You can't beat me. Just kidding. Obviously there's a lot of holes in my thinking here. Like how would the realms be connected? Or a big one, it's just the developers paying tribute in small ways to the past games, nothing more, nothing less. These are both valid and would totally ruin my argument, and I'm sure there's a few other holes that can't be filled without really grasping for some straws. Honestly, the timelines are like having pieces of a puzzle. Some pieces fit, but not really a lot. Well anyway, that's the end of this video for me. I'd love to hear what you guys and gals think in the comments below. Let me know if you agree or disagree. 
and if you have any other ideas about it. Anyway, have a good rest of your day or night.